Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Maldives Opposition Candidate Muazu projected to win presidential runoff. ATP Roundup, Daniel Medvedev advances to quarters in China. For one moment, the ABC broke away from a tightly controlled tour in China. Then a man with a camera arrived. US-China Tech War, AI sparks first battle in Middle East. Pro-China candidate projected to win Maldives presidency, local media. Maldives opposition candidate Muazu projected to win presidential runoff. Al Jazeera. Maldives President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli has conceded defeat in a presidential runoff vote after an official count showed his rival Mohamed Muazu in an impenetrable lead. Muazu emerged as the surprise frontrunner during the first round of voting on 8 September, taking some 46% of the ballots cast. The runoff was seen as having significant implications for the Maldives' foreign policy, especially in deciding China and India's battle for influence in the strategically located archipelago. ATP Roundup, Daniel Medvedev advances to quarters in China. Reuters. Daniel Medvedev defeated Alex de Minor in the China Open to advance to the quarterfinals. Medvedev won the first set tiebreaker and went on to win the match 7-6, 3-6-3. This victory marked Medvedev's 40th hard-court win of the season, the most on the tour. He will face Hugo Humbert in the quarterfinals. Humbert upset Andre Rublev in three sets to advance. In the Astana Open, Dominic Thiem also advanced to the quarterfinals with a three-set victory over Marcos Duron. Thiem will face Sebastian Ofner in the next round. Top seed Talon Greek Spore and Sebastian Korda also advanced to the quarterfinals in Kazakhstan. For one moment, the ABC broke away from a tightly controlled tour in China. Then a man with a camera arrived. ABC China is promoting tourism in the Xinjiang province as part of a campaign to rebrand the region, which has been the subject of allegations of human rights abuses against the Uyghur Muslim minority. The campaign aims to show a normalized Xinjiang, with visitors being taken on carefully controlled tours to showcase the region's prosperity and religious harmony. However, critics argue that it is a smokescreen to cover up alleged abuses, including mass internment camps, forced labor and birth prevention policies. In recent years, most of the old town of Kasha, a key cultural center, has been demolished, with the government claiming concerns over earthquakes and sanitation. US-China Tech War, AI sparks first battle in Middle East. Deutsche Welle. US technology firm NVIDIA has said that the US government is restricting the export of its most advanced chips to some Middle Eastern countries but did not specify which ones or why. It is believed the move is part of the tech war between China and the US. In an attempt to slow down China's AI progress, the US has restricted Chinese access to computer chips or semiconductors needed for the most advanced AI models. The US Department of Commerce announced last year that it was restricting exports of advanced chips to China and Russia, and this August's announcement adds another layer to these export restrictions. Likely candidates for the export restrictions are Iran, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Qatar and Israel. The US government said that AI-enabling chips were technologies that are force multipliers for military modernization and human rights abuses. The US is concerned that Middle Eastern countries could be seen as a means for China to acquire access to advanced chips that it cannot otherwise buy. Pro-China candidate projected to win Maldives presidency, local media. Nikkei Asia. Opposition candidate Mohamed Muazu is projected to win the Maldives presidential runoff vote, beating incumbent Ibrahim Soli, according to local media. Muazu, who is backed by pro-China former President Abdullah Yameen, was leading the count with 54% of the vote against 46% won by Soli. The result could see the Maldives shift closer to China, as Muazu's coalition has launched an India Out campaign promising to remove a small Indian military presence. Soli, on the other hand, championed an India-first policy and focused on building relations with India. Rwanda ambassador says Swella Braverman absolutely wrong on immigration. The Guardian. 
The UK government's immigration policy has been criticised by Johnston Bizingi, the High Commissioner of Rwanda, who was secretly filmed in an undercover sting by campaign group led by donkeys. Bizingi expressed support for the government's plan to send asylum seekers to his country, but argued ministers should consider the driving forces behind migration. He described it as immoral for the UK to claim to be a compassionate country, asserting that such a claim was undermined by its history of imperialism. Bizingi also appeared dismissive when discussing evidence that 12 refugees were shot dead by police in Rwanda in 2018. The UK government's plan to send asylum seekers to Rwanda has been ruled unlawful by the Court of Appeal. The government has appealed to the Supreme Court, with a hearing scheduled for October. The investigation also revealed that Bizingi had given mixed messages on whether any refugees sent to Rwanda would be returned to their home country. Maldives, opposition candidate wins presidential election. Deutsche Welle. Mohamed Muiz, the opposition candidate, has won the presidential runoff in the Maldives with over 54% of the vote. Incumbent Ibrahim Soli conceded defeat after an official count showed Muiz in an unassailable lead. Muiz, who is viewed as heavily pro-China, has promised to remove Indian troops from the Maldives and rebalance the country's trade, which he said favoured India. Previously, the Maldives had prioritised building relations with India under Solia's leadership. The Maldives is strategically located in the Indian Ocean and is an important shipping lane. Pro-China frontrunner set to win Maldives presidency, local media says. South China Morning Post. Mohamed Muazu, who has indicated a return to closer ties with China if elected, is set to win the presidential election in the Maldives, according to local media. Preliminary results put Muazu in the lead with 53.92% of the vote, ahead of incumbent Ibrahim Mohamed Soli. Muazu's Maldivian Democratic Party previously oversaw a substantial increase in Chinese loans when it was last in power. The Maldives' strategic location in the Indian Ocean has made it a focus of competition between India and China. That's all for today's news. We've seen some interesting developments, from the projected win of Mohamed Muazu in the Maldives' presidential runoff to the ongoing tech war between the US and China. First, in the Maldives, Muazu's victory could potentially shift the country closer to China, as his coalition has launched an India Out campaign. This could have significant implications for the country's foreign policy and the battle for influence between China and India in the strategically located archipelago. Speaking of China, there are new reports of China promoting tourism in the Xinjiang province, which has been the subject of allegations of human rights abuses against the Uyghur Muslim minority. Critics argue that this campaign is a smokescreen to cover up alleged abuses, including mass internment camps and forced labor. In the tech world, the US government is restricting the export of advanced chips to some Middle Eastern countries, believed to be part of the ongoing tech war between China and the US. The US is concerned that Middle Eastern countries could be used as a means for China to acquire access to advanced chips that it cannot otherwise buy. And finally, in the UK, the government's immigration policy has come under criticism, with the High Commissioner of Rwanda expressing support for the plan to send asylum seekers to his country but arguing that ministers should consider the driving forces behind migration. So, what are your thoughts on these news stories? Do you have any questions or opinions you'd like to share? Let's open up the discussion. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.